Okay, let's look at this Bio Savar application. Um, and I just want us to start off by considering this wire. It has two straight sections of length L and then this semicircle here, radius big R. And I'm just going to kind of go from left to right and analyze it, thinking about what's going on here. We're asked to determine the B field at point C. So if I think about Bio Savar here, um, I want to keep my eye on the ball, which is the cross product between DS and R. So if I start on the leftmost straight segment, I can draw in my DS here, and I'm drawing it in really big. DS is infinitesimally small, of course, right? Um, but this would be my DS. DS is always in the direction of current, and it is a really small section of your wire. So it would point to the right there. What I want you to notice is that R, also the vector R there, R always points from the source current, which is your little chunk there, DS, right? The source current to your point of interest. So R, my R vector is going to point from my source current to point C there. That's my R vector. So those two vectors are parallel for that straight segment. And what that means, if those two vectors are parallel, what does that mean about the cross product? Is that the cross product is going to be zero. So cross product is, of course, a vector product that um, the way that you can think about it physically is it filters out all of the parallel components of two vectors. And the only thing that's left over after you um, execute the cross product is the product of their normal components. In this case, there are no normal components. So that straight segment, that left straight segment doesn't contribute. If I look at the little straight segment on the right, I have my DS that's again pointing to the right and I have my R vector here and I see there they're anti-parallel. Again, I have no normal components at all. So because I have no normal components, my cross product renders zero there as well. So the two straight segments there are going to render me zero cross product. Now, another way I can have of um, kind of thinking about this physically, and I want you to do this both ways, is to think about the shape of the B field. So the shape of the B field around a straight wire segment, of course, is just going to be like a con um, in the shape of concentric circles. So I'm just going to draw one circle. I'm not going to be very good at drawing these circles, but your textbook is much better, so I'll refer to that. Um, in this case here, if I use right-hand rule, I see that this would be um, on the side that's coming towards me would be going down. The side that's going away from me would be going upward. And um, you can pop that into 3D on your own using right-hand rule. It's best to actually physically do right-hand rule right in front of you. Your hand is in three dimensions, right? The picture is not. So it really helps your brain. Our brains are made to work well in 3D. It really helps your brain if you're actually executing right-hand rule right in front of your face so that you can see what's going on there in three dimensions. Okay. So um, one way that I can know that those straight segments physically don't contribute is I see that they're going to contribute in the section above and below the straight segments of wire, right? I can consider what those B fields would look like there, but they're not going to contribute left and right, so they wouldn't contribute at point C. So the straight segments don't contribute. I can know that by just analyzing from the beginning. So we see that really our analysis is going to be about this curved segment. So um, I don't know, I guess I'll draw a little DS right here. Direction in the direction of current, right? There's my DS. And then um, I'm going to take a second and actually clean up for just a sec to get this R out of the way. Okay. I'm going to pop my R in for this DS now. Remember, it goes from the source current to your point of interest. So when we used R for E fields, R was not a vector, you guys. It was a, um, only, it was a scalar. So we could just be like, R is the distance between the source charge and the point of interest. But now it's a vector, and the direction really matters since we're executing a cross product. So make sure that when you draw that, you know, A, you do draw it into your diagram and B, you are considering the direction when you execute your right hand rule. So um, conveniently, everywhere on this arc, I have DS um, here. DS is perpendicular to R. 
everywhere on the arc. Okay, yay. So that means that, um, actually what that means is that we don't lose anything in the cross product at all, that all the components are normal. There are no parallel components at all. So this is kind of a clean example where the straight line segments are all parallel or anti-parallel components and those render zero for cross product and the curved segment, like it all contributes, right? All of the current contributes to B field at C because there are no parallel components of the vectors between D, S, and R since it's a perfect semicircle there. Okay, so um, I'm gonna take my Biosivar expression and I'm going to uh, spend a second with it here and I'll write it in magnitude. So I give it to you guys in this vector form here, mu naught i over 4 pi ds cross r. And how um, I have it written here, I have it written as the full vector r over r cubed. And you might be wondering, why doesn't she write it as r hat over r squared? It's the same thing. In my experience, um, students sometimes struggle with unit vectors. So if you are super comfortable with unit vectors, just write it using the unit vector and R squared in the denominator. If you're not comfortable with unit vectors, then write it this way. What I've found over the years is that students are more successful if I don't use unit vectors. And I mean, I'll tell you that you have to learn unit vectors. You do. They're going to be everywhere. Um, but I'll write it this way just to, I don't know, help a little bit, I guess. So this is vector form. Um, if I write this in magnitude form, what that looks like is dB. I mean, you know this, right? Magnitude form, mu naught i over 4 pi. Now let's think about what magnitude is here. That's going to be ds times r times the sine of the angle between them, right? That's what a cross product is. So the angle there between them everywhere here is going to be 90 degrees. So for this, this is 90 degrees everywhere on the arc is what we've just said. Sine of 90 is 1, so that makes RdB be equal to mu naught i over 4 pi um, ds over r squared. Okay. Uh, in this in this particular case, the r, my little little r here, is equal to a constant because the current, um, the source the source current is stays the exact same distance since we're in a circular arc away from my point of interest. So actually, um, I can write this as mu naught i over four pi big R squared. That's a constant, right? Ds. So really, if I want to find my B, this is all I'm integrating here. So my B just means I'm adding up all the dBs, right? That's all an integral does here. So if I add up all the dBs, that's going to be I pull my constant stuff out. So mu naught i over 4 pi r squared. And really, I'm adding up all my dSs. So um, that's all I'm really doing. And that ds there is just that tiny little piece of arc length. And I'm going to add those up. I'm going to add those up from 0 to pi r, because I go through half a circle there, right? So what I get is then b, I'll just do that over here, equals mu naught i over 4 pi r squared. ds 0 to pi r, of course, just gives me pi r, that arc length of half a circle there. So what I get is mu naught i over 4 r. That's the magnitude of my b. And remember, I'm finding the b field at point c, so I'm going to add that little subscript there. Um, so I want to write this. This is a vector quantity, the B field. So I want to write it as a vector. So my final answer here would be the B field at point C is going to be equal to mu naught i over 4r. And then go ahead and do right-hand rule in order to get your direction. So my ds, there are a couple different ways you can do that. You can do your ds cross r. 
Um, when you do that right hand rule, that gives you an into the page B field. Or you can use the right hand rule where your thumb is in the direction of current and your fingers curve in the direction of the B circle, the concentric circles around the wire. Do whichever one works for you, or you know, you can do them both and make sure that they agree to make sure that you're using your right hand rule correctly.